was a woman who lived. You know who I'm talking about? I don't know what his name is. But I know he died through his cloth in his head, through boxing. Yes, and his and organs were used his, to his save liver, somebody else's life. Yes, what a word of that. What, what was it, his liver? Well, go on. What, what point or are you something? making? Well, his liver or something. Yeah, what uh, point are you was, making? Well, was given to this woman. Yes. Who now lives because of him. Now, you work that out. I can't. Well, allow me to tell you that it's very easy to work out. If we follow the argument that you seem to be putting there, then we all ought to go out immediately and crash our cars so that others can live. No. The man was boxing, he no. suffered an injury. Yes, someone benefited from that injury, but he should never have suffered the injury in that way in the first place. The boxing is barbaric, it is fit for no creature at all, but certainly not for man. I couldn't agree more. Fine. Well, have you anything else to couldn't say? Couldn't agree more with you. Good. Well, but, we've got I that mean, out of the way. One person lives, one person dies. Right. Fair. Indeed. Well, in that case, you've just I said that it's a good idea that we have car crashes. Don't be silly, point, madam. No, no. The point is, he, he decided to box. He decided. Well, that doesn't mean it's right. Suzanne, can I ask no, you a very simple question? I don't know. A very simple question. Do you believe when two men decide that they want to have a fight with broken bottles outside the local brewery that we let them? <laughs> Do you think we should let them? No, I Why don't. Why not? They've both decided. No, I They've don't. They've both decided, and one if, one if one of them dies, we'll give all their bits away, so it'll be all right it, in the end. It is a point about boxing. It is not it a is point. Not Just sure. because they have decided to do it doesn't mean to say that it is right. No. Right. But they well, it's either right or wrong, Suzanne. You can't have your cake right. and your hate me. Number three. So is it right or wrong? Uh, it's wrong. Boxing Thank you. Wrong number right. three. But Fine, number get three. on to number three. Number three. AIDS. AIDS. Now... Now, you know AIDS as well as I do. A-I-D-S. You know? Go AIDS. on. I know what it is. Which are you talking about? The I'm... AIDS to a better life? Or are you no, talking I'm about talking... the disease? You know very well what I'm talking about. Well, you're not giving me any bloody clues, woman. Are you talking about acquired immune deficiency uh, syndrome? Yes, I am. Yes, Thank I you. Am. Right. Now, what have you got to now, say about it? Would you mind? Will you stress whenever you can? The absolute fine now Suzanne, is, I will is, not stress is, anything is, on your behalf. Is, is, Suzanne, I'm sorry. I make my decisions about what I stress. Now, if you would like to stress it here and now, do so yes, and then I get off. I would like to stress it here and now, if you won't. It's a, any time you can. Uh, Suzanne, you had your opportunity and you blew it. Goodbye. Anita will be with you s shortly, providing you're not as garrulous and verbose as our last caller. Today, I'm at Jordan's East Bank Street in Southport. Um, excuse me, sir. You look as though you've come a long way to buy a car. That's right. These deals are unbeatable. Look at this. A new Vauxhall with only 4.9% finance and an APR of only 9.6%. With a deal like this, I was here faster than a shot out of my Magnum. People come from far and near to buy a new Vauxhall from Jordan's. The new Vauxhall Centre, East Bank Street, Southport. Telephone, double three oh double six for directions. The Vauxhall Car Centre, Southport, double three oh double six. Blinking egg dead. Why don't you get a decent radio to match this flash car? Well, that one cost an arm and a leg, but it's never been much good. Uh, you need to contact West Orton Car Radio, mate. They've got superb systems by Blaupunkt and Panasonic. Hey, and they've got the Blaupunkt D-Stock range at less than half the normal price. None of this distortion like with one of them. Blaupunkt what? Blaupunkt. It's German, isn't it? I thought you were supposed to be brainy. Hey, you can also get electric windows, vehicle alarms and car phones fitted by by West Horton Car Radio. Oh, so find the right station with West Horton Car Radio, Church Street, West Horton. Phone West Horton 814 229 before you crack up. I'm leaning on the lamppost at the corner of the street in case a certain little lady comes by. Oh, me, oh, my, I 
hope the little lady comes by. It's 25 years since the great George Formby passed away, and in a golden year's two-hour special on Easter Bank Holiday Monday, we'll pay our own tribute to Lancashire's great son of comedy. So join me, Mike Tunstall, at 8 o'clock on Bank Holiday Monday evening on Red Rose for our tribute to George Formby. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? The grand as ever. It'll be a smart programme. He buried him, buried in Warrington Cemetery, you know. Yeah, not many people know that. Alan Bessie. I'll do Anita. Oh, hi, Alan. Uh, early on this evening, you made, um, you know, you turned around and said about cousins. First cousins couldn't marry. Yeah? Yeah, well, it's not strictly true, because I know, like, two such couples that are married. When you say it's not strictly true, they generally can't, you seem to be implying. Well... And can no. they marry or can't they? Yes, they can marry, yes. Thank you very much for yeah. that information. Yeah. Is that all? Okay. Well, I'm happy with it, yeah. <laughs> I did say at the time that I wasn't sure, but I didn't think Yeah, before. yeah, so You're no, telling me um, they can. They've even got the same name. You know, the two fathers were brothers. And the other couple is also the two fathers were brothers, you know, so... Smart as it. Well, thank you for that, Anita. Okay. Tara. How are you? How do, Keith? Uh, uh, and good morning, Alan, again. Uh, you did ask me for chapter and verse on that, um, what I was talking about, the homosexuals. Uh, it's the First Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 9. Let us hear it. It says, Nor men kept for unnatural purposes, nor men who lie with men, will not inherit God's kingdom. Or well, perhaps if that's God kim God's kingdom, he can shove it. Well, that's your view, but... That is entirely my view. That's for the chappy that was interested. Fine. OK. Fine, thank but you very much. Bye-bye. So, if anyone is listening who is gay, according to the Bible at Corinthians, you cannot be a Christian. If anyone's listening who is a Christian, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I'll do Stuart. Good morning, Mr Benzik. Yes? Um, I've rung, in fact, to quote you that very same passage. Very kind of you. Are you ashamed of being a Christian, that it does not allow people their particular mores? Certainly not. Then you should be. How do Mike? Oh, Alan. Yes, I'd like to put forward the idea about hanging, and that if you used a truth drug after convicted murderers... Cru truth drugs are fallible. Very fallible indeed. Are they available? Well, they are available, but not a perfect one, no. They are very, very fallible. Wouldn't you consider the idea of one on conviction? No, murder? because they're no point. They don't work. Yes, correct, yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, bye. Mick, you're next. Don't go away. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. Waterloo Road in Blackpool has a number of markets dotted along it, but two of them stand out from the rest, the New Market and M2 Market. They're both packed with top quality bargains to give you peace of mind when shopping. The New Market and M2 Market are also convenient because they're directly opposite each other on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. Don't settle for anything else and don't be fooled by imitations. The New Market and M2 Market are the original and still the best. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. Easter sale now on. Open Bank Holiday Monday. Hundreds of rolls to choose from. Prices from only 50 pence a square yard at the Carpet Supermarket, Fletcher Road, Preston. Have you heard about the latest offer at Tracy's Garage, Wigan Road, Leyland? For the next 20 weeks, there's a weekly draw for household goods and food to a total value of £1,000. Yes, £1,000, plus free soup bowls and kitchen equipment. We'll open daily 24 hours for petrol, diesel, groceries and top-line videos. And we also accept all major credit cards, plus Shell Agency, Shell Gold and Dial cards. So find out more and receive personal service at Tracy's Garage, Leyland Service Station, Wigan Road, Leyland. I'll do Mick. Uh, hello, Alan. Yeah? Yeah, I'm ringing up about the uh, state of the prisons today. I mean, I've been in prison, um, and I've recently come out, but they treat you like animals in there. Well, perhaps you should avoid going in again, then. Well, I didn't intend to go in in the first place. No, well, no one does intend to go in, but they do end up there. What were you in for? 
Now, I see. Well, perhaps if you paid your dues to your ex-wife, you wouldn't have gone there. Yeah, but I, why Will you pay I... them in future? No. You won't pay them in future? Well, I haven't seen my wife in ten years. Well, you won't pay them in future? No. Enjoy your sojourn in prison when you go back next time. How do Ted? Hello, Alan. Uh, sometime last week you were chatting with a bloke who was asking financial advice. Um, so I'd like to prime you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've got uh, some money which I would like to invest. I need, need to invest it, really, because I'm facing redundancy. About um, between twelve and fourteen thousand pounds is only in the bank. <clears throat> so, what do you reckon I should do to get income from it? The answer to that is I don't know. Income. You don't know. I don't know. No. Oh. Well, what you said to this other guy suggested me <laughs> that you had the. Uh, what I told the other guy was that he could not live on the revenue from £2,000, no matter what he did with it. He then proposed a series of different things that he might do with it, and all I did was point out that he would not be able to live off the proceeds. Uh, to be perfectly frank, what I did say to him was that the only way he could ever in any way, shape or form, achieve his goal, and that is to live off the proceeds of his £2,000 investment, was to put it into something that was a very, very grave risk indeed. Because the higher the interest, the yeah. greater the risk. And of course, if he got, let us say he got the ludicrous 20%, then he would still not have a great deal of money coming in, would it? It would be about £400, which is hardly adequate to live on. Mm. Now, to get 20%, you've got to go some. Yes, so you've not got any suggestions then? I have none, other than you take advice from right. those... You have to who pay are... for it, so... <laughs> Indeed you do have to pay for it. Mm. Um, the problem is, sometimes when you pay for it, it isn't of that great use to you. Yeah. But what you do have to do, Ted, is decide what you want from your money. There are a number of things you could do with it. For example, you could go out and pay cash to buy three terraced houses and rent them to students. That would provide you with a fairly substantial income, which well, may or may not... houses for about 15,000 quid? You would get about five if you shopped carefully and bought okay. terraced houses. I, I currently am looking for a house, not in that price yeah. margin, but one finds oneself bimbling in and out of estate agents all over the place who don't seem to do anything for their money, but never mind. And I've seen houses as little as £1,200 for sale. Now, they're not going to be palaces, yeah. but the revenue from those could prove to be quite lucrative. Is that what you would do if you No, that is not what I would no. do. I disapprove of that, in fact. I, you asked me for some ideas. Yeah. You didn't ask me to tell you what I would do with it. Well, what, do you, what do you think you would do? I'm not sure. It isn't... If you were facing redundancy and needed to secure some income for your future. It depends on my financial circumstances at the time. Oh, yeah. And what I want from life. And I probably want very different things than you do. And in order to answer the question what I would do with it, I would have to deliver of certain pieces of information that I'm not prepared to deliver of. Yeah. OK. All right, I'm Thanks. sorry, it's of no Bye. use to you, but that okay. it is Bye. what it's worth to are. How do Stephen? <laughs> Stefan, sorry. Stephan. Good evening, Alan, yes. Evening. Uh, I missed the conversation, um, the guy claiming to be gay. But claiming to be gay? Why yeah. do you suggest there might be doubt? Sorry? Go on, you seem to imply that there was some doubt. Yes, gay uh, means, means um, full of fun, wild abandon, uh, Yes, that doesn't matter. The conversation I picked up on was a guy that said um, that the Bible disagreed with us. Indeed. And uh, he managed to get through much quicker than I did. But just to throw some more light on it, uh, I can just quote a, a couple of verses from Romans chapter 1, really clarifying what God does say about it. And it's just this, it says, Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust, even though women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones, unnatural in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with one another and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. I don't know whether that uh, implies perhaps to the disease they're contracting today, but it's not natural, is it? That's, that's the point that's being made. 
As far as I'm concerned, yes. As far as your ancient novel is concerned, no. See, Alan, my ancient novel is a manual for life. You drive a Ford Sierra, I believe, yes? If you were to take your maker's handbook, Alan, and say, I don't think I'll put water in the radiator, I think I'll stick it in the engine. And I'll put the oil well, Stephen, in the radiator. Well, Stefan, allow me to point out to you the flaw in your analogy, and that is that you believe that your maker wrote that book or was a party to the writing of it. Yes. Fine. If you believe that, then go ahead and continue to live with that life's manual. I don't believe, so I don't have that as my life's manual. And there would be little point in me purchasing off the shelf uh, a, a fiat manual for my Sierra, because I believe my maker is not the creature that you claim to be yours. I do not believe in this amorphous intergalactical creature. It doesn't exist. Can I just say something, Al? You can say whatever you like. We live in a very scientific age, and do you not think it's unscientific to reject evidence without having first examined it for yourself? I examined it to my satisfaction, and that is all I can ever do. I didn't cease to believe simply because it was the easiest thing to do, or the hardest thing to do. I examined it to the best of my knowledge, and then rejected it. Yeah, that is a problem in life that too well, it many isn't, people... I'm sorry, Stefan, you see it as a problem. It, it isn't is a problem. a problem. Religion without reality, that is, Alan. And what do you mean, religion without reality? I don't have religion. Well, you don't have reality either. Well, if that's how you see it, fine. I really get stuffed off by Bible-thumping cretins trying to shove their God up my nose. Quite honestly, Stefan, you can put your God into every orifice of yours you like, but keep him out of my face. One day, though, Alan, you Drop stand... dead and go meet your maker, all right? You'll have a good time. Carry a cross, get a few nails through your hands. You'll feel even better. It's Easter. Have a ball. I'll eat chocolate. A far, far better furniture store. At Minson's of Blackburn, a far, far better furniture store. For lounge, dining room and bedroom furniture. For famous names in quality carpets. For all home furnishings. Edmondson's offers choice. Edmondson's gives first class service and Edmondson's guarantees value for money. All round a far, far better furniture store at Darwin Street, Blackburn. A far, far better furniture store. Edmondson's. For fresh fish and chips around Preston Town Centre to eat in or take away, look for the Happy Haddock sign. Wherever you are in Preston Town, you never far from a Happy Haddock. I bought my quilt from the Continental Bedding Company, and they had so many to choose from. Yes, Continental Bedding Company at 210 Church Street, Blackpool, and Preston Open Market. 12.5 tog hollow fibre quilts made for us by one of Lancashire's leading manufacturers and sold with a no-quibble money-back guarantee. Bedding and textiles all at discount prices. Yes, it's worth a look at the Continental Bedding Company, walk-round store at 210 Church Street, Blackpool, and Preston Open Market. Continental bedding. That's my choice. Have you always yearned to visit Australia? Places like Townsville, the tropical city which is the gateway to the Barrier Reef. Or Sydney, claimed with some justification to be the most beautiful city in the world. Or Brisbane, a fast-growing city of fine period architecture and subtropical parks and gardens. Well, with the help of Red Rose Radio and National Travel World, your dream can come true. And you'll still have chained out of a thousand pounds. On Monday the 9th of June, you will travel from Red Rose area by luxury coach in time to catch the early evening Qantas flight from Manchester Airport. Staying in superb three-star hotels, you will enjoy excursions to the Barrier Reef, Brisbane, and a Captain Cook coffee cruise, and a full tour of the Blue Mountains. On June the 23rd, your dream will be complete when you arrive back at Manchester Airport with memories that will last forever. At £995 per head, this is a dream holiday of a lifetime. Make sure of your place now by telephoning or calling at your nearest branch of National Travel World or collect a booking form from Red Rose Reception. How do, John? How do, Sean? Yeah. I'd like to see the seatbelt law abolished. The what? The, you know, the current seatbelt law. Yes. I'd like to see it abolished. Why? Well, I feel that any action which does not um, affect any second party... 
It does affect a second party. Which one? When you spread your face all over your windscreen, I have to pay tax so they can stitch it back to your ears. All right, all right, then. If you there's no all right, there's no all right. There is? There isn't. If you take out the secondary insurance policy, which will cover that cost, then surely that will cover... The, the insurance cost. company payments to hospital don't cover the cost of the hospital. If you take an... Uh, uh, I don't care. Sean, I'm sorry. Society is there to protect its members. Now, if you don't like it, tough. How do, Tom? Yeah, I'd like to talk about unemployment. What do you want to say about it? You can't yeah, well, anything original, can it? No, I've, I've been unemployed now for three weeks, and I've tried to get on that uh, enterprise allowance scheme. And they won't let me get on it because they said I haven't been unemployed long enough. Right. I've got to be unemployed three months. So well, no, I mean, at my age, I ain't going to get a job like in the building. Well, here. Tom, those are the rules of the scheme. That is the rule of the scheme. If yeah. the scheme didn't have rules, it wouldn't be there. Yeah, but I mean, they're going to pay me, you know, for three months to stay on the dole, but, but, but they pay me about £90 a week now, I think. But, like, I, I could, like, I borrowed a £1,000, I can start, like, more or less straight away. Because I'll never get back in the building chair now the way it is. I'm, I'm like, well, uh, Tom, I'm back. sorry, you are complaining about the rules of the scheme. Fine, complain. But they won't change them for you. Those are the rules. If you don't like the rules, fine. So, I mean, there's nothing you can There's do nothing you can house. do. Those are the rules of the scheme. The yep. rules were made for a particular reason. They did not want to discourage people who left work in very recent times from seeking employment elsewhere, because those people have a better chance. I realise the difficulties in your case. But in the main, people who have just lost their job have a better chance of gaining employment than those who lost it some months ago. So they protect themselves from being inundated by people who lost their job last week by creating that time requisite. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Stephen, how do to you? Hello. Hello. Yes, we've done that. What do you want? Um, you've got a Ford Sierra for sale. No. You've, I've heard you've got a Ford Sierra. I have got a Ford Sierra. What, with four flat tyres? No. I'm about ten foot away from you, you've got four flat slash tyres. You're about ten foot away from me. Yeah, I'm in the nearest phone box towards the, um, the church where you're at now. I see. What is the telephone number? It is now 798... You're a liar. Good night. How do another Stephen? Hello, Alan. Yeah? I'd like to say that necrophilia is dead boring. Everybody knows that it's dead boring. How do Bob? Hello, Alan. I'd like to talk about the evening Glenn Holmes case, please. Go on. Uh, I don't condone for one minute the British, uh, the DPP's office for the mistakes they obviously made, but I don't think the fault for Saturday's fiasco uh, lies entirely with them. They had a duty to comply with the, um, the procedures for satisfying the Irish courts. I agree with that. But I feel that um, the two judges who released Glenn Holmes did not stick too closely to the letter of the law. Um, I feel that... The seriousness of the allegations against Glenn Holmes um, did not seem to weigh sufficiently with these judges. They released a... Um, I mean, there should have been a shoplifter from uh, Woolworths or whatever, then that's fair well, Bob, I'm sorry, but if... Sorry, Stephen. If Bob, you re actually. It is Bob. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> to change the name so quickly, I'll yeah. up. If you have a legal system mm. and you do not operate it, then I'm sorry... You cannot expect judges in other countries to say, well, all right, you know, it's a serious crime she's been accused of. Yes. I, I feel that they could have held her for a further 12 hours. That's Why not, should they? Well, it, because it's such a serious crime, Alan. It is such a serious crime, but let us first of all establish that Evelyn Gledhelm in this country is not guilty of that crime. No, she's not guilty in any country. Right. Now, you are asking the Irish government to hold one of their citizens yeah. merely on the whim of the British government. I feel, Alan, that it's more than a whim. It, it you may well feel yeah. it is, Do but in legal terms it isn't. No, there were if actually nine extradition warrants, Alan. Yes. So that's hardly what the I one, on the whim. <laughs> the one that was relevant on the day. No, no, all was nine wrong. were relevant it, on the day. All it, nine. The dates were wrong. They were not sworn properly. That's correct. They were you not sworn properly. You cannot expect the judiciary of another country to bail you out when you foul up with your own system. No matter how heinous the crime the person is accused of, 
they have an obligation to protect their own citizens. No, I must disagree, Alan. The, 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 the Bob, that if somebody, if somebody in the, America yes, accused you... An anomaly, no, uh, I'm not sorry, going to yeah. draw an analogy sorry, at all. Analogy. I'm going yeah. to ask you whether you think sorry, yeah. the British government should dispatch citizens around the world without the proper legal authority so to do. No, no, I feel And neither should the Irish no, government. No, could you let me finish? I, I feel that if a like system, ha if a like case happened in England, that the warrants were incorrect, I feel that I, sh I would personally think that we should give another 12 hours for the right warrants to be issued. 12 hours is not going to hurt Glen Holmes in any way whatsoever. I'm sorry, it I disagree with you. Yes. It does. Holding a person in custody is not something to be done lightly. The Irish judiciary did exactly what they should have done. I have not one thousandth of a hint of criticism Do you for the not feel Irish that the Anglo-Irish agreement makes any difference whatsoever then? I don't think the Anglo-Irish agreement, accord, call it what you will, is in any way going to change the law. I, I the feel... law is there. The British judiciary failed to obey its own law. Yes. Do not expect the Irish judiciary to obey it on your behalf. No, but I feel that Glen Holmes could have been rearrested on the simple charge of resisting arrest. We also are on television... The I do not think that she should be charged with a res resisting so arrest when that resist, when that arrest is actually not backed up by anything. That, on that, that basis... You can't, if a policeman comes into you in the street and says, I want to arrest you, you've got no argument. You can charge him afterwards with the wrongful arrest. But if he comes up to you in the street and arrest and you run away, you're resisting arrest. Indeed you are. Yes, and however, you did. However, if you are arrested, taken to court and yeah. set free by the court and the policeman then attempts to arrest you, that for policeman charge, has no right to do it. I'm charge, sorry, then. Bob, you are clutching no, you're losing, actually, Alan. I'm not. The, the, that is a different charge. She has not been I'm tried sorry, or taken to court Bob. on the pretense of a resisting arrest. All she's been to Bob. court for was for the uh, extradition to the United Bob. Kingdom. the legal duty is on others, not on this is a different case, Alan. I don't care, arrest. Bob. Fine. You believe that the Irish should pull Michael Haver's rocks out the fire. I don't. He should have got it right. I believe the Irish police should have arrested Glen Holmes for resisting Then the you're arrest. a jerk. How do... Fred! Fred? Chris. What do you mean, Chris? Well, it's not Fred, it's Chris. <laughs> All right, Chris will settle for. Fred was <laughs> the name I was given. Perhaps you've changed it. Hello, no, Chris. No, no, no. Uh, the man out in the jungle had been there and he felt very ill and there was no doctors about. So he went to the witch doctor and he examined him, you know, his upset tummy and everything. And he gave him a leather thong. He said, chew on that three times a day and in a week you'll be better. So he chewing away and after a week the witch doctor came and seen him. He said, well, are you better? He said, no. He said, the thong is ended, but the malady lingers on. <sighs> no. Dreadful. <laughs> Never mind. Good night, Perhaps Phil, Tara, perhaps <laughs> Phil can bail us out after the break. Calling all hoteliers, restaurants and guest houses. Clegg and Phillips of 62 Russell Road, Cleveleys are your local trade butchers who've built up a reputation for offering the finest quality meats and poultry at the keenest prices. For current prices, call Clegg and Phillips High Class Butchers on Blackpool 865-885. That's 865-885. Don't forget there's free delivery for hotels, restaurants and guest houses throughout the file. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. The new market Waterloo. If you want to shop for the real bargains, you'll be well advised to visit the New Market and M2 Market on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. They're over the road from one another, which makes shopping for bargains all the more convenient. But beware of imitations. When you've found the New Market, you've found the M2 Market, and vice versa. Shop at the New Market and M2 Market, opposite each other on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. They're the original, and they're still the best. It's the place to come, where shopping can be fun. Carpets, Easter sale now on. Open Bank Holiday Monday. Hundreds of rows to choose from. Prices from only 50 pence a square yard at the Carpet Supermarket, Fletcher Road, Preston. 
you and used cars look no further than Barker's. Right now, up to 150 used cars are in stock and ready to drive away from an incredible £100 to £10,000. Ask about our special low-rate finance offer on the award-winning Fiat Uno. You can't beat Barker's for the best deal in Fiat. Barker's Fiat, King Street, Blackburn. Phone Blackburn 52981. People buy better at Barker's. Barker's Blackburn, the Fiat. How do you feel? All right, Alan. I don't understand why you should say that uh, Christians should be ashamed of of uh, saying that homosexuality is a sin. I'm sorry, repeat the question. I don't understand why you should say that that um, Christians should be ashamed of, of saying that homosexuality is a sin. Because it isn't a sin against humans, it is only a sin against your Christian God. Yeah. Well, all Christians believe that sex before marriage Sex before marriage uh, is is a sin. Full stop. So fine, and they ought to be ashamed of that ludicrous belief. Why? Because it's stupid. Because it does, in the long term, no individual any realistic harm. Well, well, Christians uh, ought to sort out one or two of their other idiosyncrasies, like the way Christians have bludgeoned one another to death over the centuries. I really don't have a lot of respect for any religion, as a religion, as a set of beliefs that are able to cause problems to other people. If their religion, anybody's religion, whatever shade it is, is prepared to allow people their individual freedoms, then fine. Uh, but when it starts saying, look, just because you're different than me, you're a sinner, I say, stuff your religion. Well, no, no Christian ever has ever killed anybody else for their beliefs, no real Christian anyway. Oh, we're into that term now, are we? We're into the real Christian yeah. crap, are we now? That's Drop right. dead, you're talking right. bullshit. Real Christian, you're only a real, and if you're nailed to a cross, eh? I'll do, John. Hello, Alan. What do you want? Um, I was just, you know, I've been talking to a few people. Oh, like. You're yippee. What do you want? Well, they've, uh, I wanted... Goodbye. You obviously don't know what you want. I know what you want, but I don't suppose they'll do it to you. Hello, Tony. Hello, Alan. Here's a good one for you. How does an Englishman issue an extradition warrant? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> With difficulty, it seems. Well, apparently nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, least, least of all the extradition warrant issuers. <laughs> Never mind. Nice to talk to you again. I did well, didn't I? Ta -da. Alan? Yes? Uh, about this Christian thing. Go on. Uh, well, I'm a great believer in you don't knock it till you've tried it. Now, obviously, these guys that have been ringing up a one-up on me... Because I've never tried it, so I'm not knocking it. But I've Which are we on about? The homosexuality or the Christianity? Hey, eh? The homosexuality. Oh, I see. I mean, they're, but they're coming out with all these fantastic quotes from the Bible. Oh, well, you can sit down with the Bible, and if you take the quotes out of context in the right places, you can prove Christianity shouldn't exist. Oh, I'm sure you can. And while we're on that, I mean, you say you don't believe in God at all, but I reckon that you must believe in something, because there's no way you made that cash without divine help. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd never get to the catch. Ta da! Ta da! How do you, Ken? Hello, uh, Alan. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I've just been listening to some of your little comments earlier on about the cross and God knows what about Easter. Now, one thing I will be pointing out is this that some of you are uh, not only listeners, but some of your sponsors are Christians. Fine. And, uh. I don't if have people any sponsors. Excuse your me, sponsors, a moment. Excuse it, me, a moment. Yes. I don't have any sponsors. They pay your wages, pal. They may well pay my yeah. wages, and, and I real. improve their sales. You might improve their sales with all right. the people... Right. Well, listen, listen Ken, if clever. you were telling me that advertisers are going to pull out of this programme because of my point of view, the then fine, I'll get the sack, but I'll still believe what I believe. And you're a prat. I know I'm a prat. I don't have to have doubt. Why don't you write to all our advertisers, Ken? Let us see if you can convince them that your opinion is better than mine. Go away. Hello, John. Hello, Alan. Well, what do you want? Uh, this vicar's walking down the road. Is he, by God? And he, he sees a frog. And, uh, this frog says, Hello, Father. He says, Hello, frog. He says, It's me, Tommy. He says, Tommy, Tommy who? He says, Tommy the choir boy. He says, well, What are you doing as a frog? He said, The wicked witch turned me into a frog. He says, God, that's terrible. He says, Well, well, how can I help you? He says, well, if you take me home and put me to bed, he says, in the morning I'll be a choir boy again. So he takes him home, puts him in bed, 
in the morning is a choir boy again. Mm. And that's the case for the defence. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. How do you mourn Hello, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to your programme tonight and I heard your remarks about Easter and the cross and Fine. so on. Uh, now, I would like just for you to answer, I know you don't normally answer questions, but perhaps you would answer this one. And perhaps you I won't. You said you would be eating chocolate. Yeah. Yes. What sort of chocolate? Do you mind telling me? I've no idea what sort. It's not been bought yet. Is it yet. Easter eggs? No, it would probably be a Mars bar. And yes, I thought you'd probably say that. Um, because I know you have a penchant for Mars bars. To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I was rather hurt, actually, because I thought it was a little bit, well, not called for, you know, the way you answered that young man. Uh, but it, it, it made me wonder, do you celebrate Christmas, Alan? As an individual, no. You don't? My wife enjoys the Christmas festivities, and mm -hmm. I mean in the commercial sense. Yeah. And so we celebrate that. I never used to, actually. No. As a child, obviously, we did and all that, but then as a child I was brought up a Christian anyway. Yeah. However, no, I don't celebrate Christmas. No, no. I don't celebrate no. Easter. And if you're going to use the argument of Christmas anyway, it's a bit weak because the pagan festival was in existence, pagan festival of Yuletide, was in existence before the Christian Christmas existed anyway. Ah, oh, well, according to the Oxford uh, Dictionary, Christmas means the celebration of the birth of Christ. Oh, Christ. indeed it does, but mm -hmm. if one changes yeah. the name to what so, it used to be before yeah, the Christians so, nicked it, you'd call it Yuletide. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know there was. Something. Right, so, I mean, it's all academic, isn't it? Oh, yes, if, if you're exactly. telling me, do I take the bank holidays that are available at those times, yeah. the answer is yes. Yeah, you do. Mm. Uh, well, you have the best of both worlds, then, Alan, don't you? I don't have the best of both worlds. I believe there is only one world. Yeah. OK. All right, I knew love. you'd have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye -bye. It may not be a satisfactory one for you, and if I offend your religion, then I'm sorry. But you shouldn't get people on the phone trying to ram it down my throat. I will make my mind up about whether I have a god or not on the basis of my information. And if you want to come on and try to convince me that there is a Christian god, then fine. But you will have to accept some ridicule as you do so. Mona, we have had. Who's next? We've got Susan next. Hello. Well, hang on. How can you confuse Susan with Dennis? What's up with you, Alice? Hello, Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Dennis appears not to want to speak to us. Let us try him once more. Hello, Dennis. Uh, hello. Oh, I'll... you finally made it, did you? Hello. Uh, I'd like to talk about meat. Well? Well, uh, I've got 18 inches of... How do... John? Hi, you know, just um, a final point on this Christianity and... and uh, How do you know it's going to be a final point? Well, it might. Know. Well, well, if it is another one, they're going to have to be sharp. Um, it's this thing that John Allegro said, and, and he was, I don't know, called a blasphemer and all sorts, after the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, not to put too fine a point on it. Um, he was rather surprised that Jesus Christ surrounded himself with 12 single men. And he expounded on this, and he wasn't half shut up quick. And that's it? That's it. OK, I'll leave you with it. Ta-da. Right. How do Susan? Hello. Yep. About AIDS. Go on. Again. I'm stressing. Yes, I do want to... Oh, I'm it. sorry, Susan. You had your opportunity no. before. You, you can say no as much as you like, but no one will hear it, Susan. You're no longer with us. Goodbye. Blackburn Camping Centre. Early season clearance sale is now on. Massive 40% discount on new frame tents. X-Hire six-berth frame tents less than half price from £135. Save up to 35% off Van Gogh and Ultimate Specialist Ridge Tents. Clearance prices on hundreds of new and used caravan awnings. And in the clothing department, huge discounts on all ski wear and winter clothing ranges. For example, one-piece ski suits, half price at twenty nine ninety five. Also save up to 30% on Brugi, Navika and Luta ski wear. Call now at the Blackburn Camping Centre sale at 26 King Street, Blackburn. Telephone Blackburn 661 650. Make your way to Blackburn Town Centre this Easter. You'll have a great Good Friday taking the family around the major stores. Stop in the centre on Easter Saturday too. There's an egg painting competition for all age groups. And it'll be a laugh a minute watching the children's fancy dress contest. Also in Compton Court will be the exciting charity fair with fun for all ages. With lots of lovely shops and tempting places to eat, it's just got to be shopping in the centre of Blackburn this Easter. And always. Don't forget, all major stores open on Good Friday, along with another number of smaller retailers.
The heats for Miss Red Rose Radio are coming to Trader Jack's Nightclub on Thursday the 10th and 17th of April with Robin Ross and Silver Screen Nightclub, Prince of Wales Hotel on Friday 11th and 18th of April with Paul Fairburn. Prizes include vouchers from Hair and Beauty and Just Scent of Preston. Miss Red Rose Radio 1986, sponsored by the Blackpool Imperial Hotel. Well, that's it for the old calls. This is Arnie's song. He doesn't mind us listening to it, at least. Want to win the top three albums? You can do so simply by taking part in our writing competition this week. In the 1960s, who was married to Sonny Bono? If you know the answer to that, put it on a postcard, send it to me. Alan Bezik, Red Rose Radio, P.O. Box 301, Preston, pr one one ye I'll be back with you tonight at 10 o'clock. Derek's with you till 6 in the morning, replaced by Paul Fairburn. That's someone to look forward to. I'll see you tonight. Till then, ta -ra. Two o'clock news, this is Bill Bingham. The chairman of the Manpower Services Commission says that nearly four out of every ten bosses in Britain are arguably imposters and should be sacked and replaced by women. Brian Nicholson says the answer is for every company to set up a charter for women to try to stamp out sexual discrimination. Here's our industrial correspondent, Mark Mardell. Mr Nicholson says simple arithmetic shows that 38% of male directors owe their position not to talent, not to ability, but to an unfair system. And it could be argued that if they were thrown out and replaced by capable women, British industry would be given a great boost. But he believes a less revolutionary solution would be for every firm to set up a woman's charter, to practically encourage equal opportunities and to discourage sexual harassment. Liberal leader David Steele is urging the United States to take its dispute with Libya over the Gulf of Sirte to the international courts. He says the US has a right to defend its forces against attack from Libyan missiles, but the issue should have been dealt with in court before the shooting started. The Libyans are making, I think, false claims to extend their definition of territorial waters, and the way to resolve these disputes is not to start shooting at each other, but to get them into court. Labour's ruling national executive meets today to consider the fate of 12 Liverpool party members accused of being members of the ultra-left militant tendency. The meeting follows a High Court ruling which has forced Labour to agree major changes in its disciplinary procedures. However, right-wingers on the executive are determined the hearing goes ahead. Richard Bestick reports. Executive members like Gwyneth Dunwoody say militant must be dealt with today. Having been dragged through the courts, we have now given certain undertakings. I see no reason at all why the full executive meeting can't go ahead. And she rejects claims of a witch hunt. I am going into this whole matter with my normal, open, tolerant approach. Party leader Neil Kinnock's supporters on the executive say they're prepared to sit through the night, if necessary, to deal once and for all with the militant issue. Richard Bestick, IRN, Westminster. Relatives of sailors killed when HMS Sheffield was sunk during the Falklands War will today be proudly watching the launch of her replacement. Twenty men died when the ship was hit by an Exocet missile. Brian Milligan reports. The new Sheffield will go down the slipway at the Tyneside Yard of Swan Hunters. Watching her go will be relatives of those who died, Sam Salt, her captain in the Falklands, and sailors like David Johnson, who was on board four years ago. I knew in my mind that we'd been hit by a missile. I didn't know it was an exit or anything. I was expecting a panic when it happened, but I didn't. I just went to, to the action station. In less than two weeks' time, the Sheffield will be followed by another Falklands replacement, HMS Coventry. Brian Milligan, IRN, Tyneside. The government's being accused of failing to ensure the safety of British air passengers going on holiday. Labour tourism spokesman Barry Shearman has written to Transport Minister Nicholas Ridley claiming he's so besotted with deregulating transport here that he's not done anything to improve safety in the wake of the Manchester air disaster. Independent Radio News. Do you?